Welcome back, player. I see that Elion chose to reconcile her differences with her father. That took a lot of heart and courage. Elion was a orc uh, ranger, I think, something like that. She used crossbows and swords, and she got it at Firetop Mountain. Actually got to, like, she suffered quite a bit, got to her father, finally got to him, and then uh, he, she was, like, he, like, abandoned her when she was little and her mother and she got to him and she's like should i fight him should i kill him should i continue you know if i let him go should i continue to fight see to get to the end where the the wizard is the warlock and she was like i've met my father i've completed my task i'm gonna live to see another day and so she took off and went back home let me begin a new journey so let's see i got a couple new guys I think I got that bald guy. Yeah, this was her. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got the bald guy. Yeah, I don't want that one yet. Let's go back. The hell is this person? So I met a great adventurer named Aaron Degar. We fell in love, but he never returned for me. Oh shit, I can talk to these people? The hell? Yeah, she fought the whole room of orcs and survived. Yeah, I remember that. It's got a good point. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, the monk because I said I would go with him next time. They're, they're, not uh, they're not unlocked. I have to purchase them with souls. So as you are fighting and you do things and you get gain, you know, make your way through Firetop, you can unlock souls. It's basically like your currency for other characters. So I can like purchase them. See? And they ha each of them has their different skills, their attacks, and you'll see as I go on here. This is the guy I'm going to pick in a minute, or right now. He is educated, so he has an above average level of education, and he is righteous, so he, uh, he's... I think evil things are scared of him. So, this is going to be interesting. Usually I, I do like a kind of... Um, little voiceover when i'm doing this so let's go ahead and let's let's see let's see if we can get back into that you know like think for a minute <sighs> uh. okay so so the youngest son of a salomonian noble land of Lowen, is a wandering priest in the services of usrael goddess of peace his aim is to spread peace and love throughout the lands of alancia Although he is not above smiting evildoers with his warhammer if necessary. That's a mace, sir. He is the epitome of calm, despite the fact that he has led a wandering life for many years. He uses his holy powers to change the attitude of hostile creatures, heal his companions, and erect protective wards against undead and demonic fiends. Uh, if he can do that in this, then hell yeah. Because I haven't seen them ever do real spells or anything. I don't think I have any other playthroughs, so yeah, let's go in. Okay, here we go. The King of Salamonis, who is also your third cousin twice removed, knows of an ancient tome of demonology, the Compendium Stoltitia. Lost centuries ago in the caves of Firetop Mountain. As you are a man of great learning and a priest of Usril, and the king's third cousin twice removed, he wishes you to find this tome and bring it to the Halls of Learning for study and preservation. To complicate matters, Firetop Mountain has been overrun by orcs, goblins, and hordes of evil creatures in the service of Zagor, a powerful warlock who has amassed a great fortune by preying on villagers and travelers around the mountain. As a priest of Uzril, the goddess of peace, you command powers that defy the undead and the demonic hordes. It is time to end Zagor's reign of terror forever. It takes you two days to reach the menacing-looking mountain with its sharp, rocky crags that jut out at unnatural angles. At the top, you can see the eerie red coloring Probably some savage vegetation, which has given the mountain its name. 
You approach a cave, the known entrance for orcs and goblins, your hand gripping the shaft of your great hammer as you consider the evil that lies ahead. Your adventure starts here. It's a cave. It's a cave. Peer into the gloom. I have come to smite you! You see dark, slimy walls with pools of water on the stone floor in front of you. The air is cold and dank. Hearing faint scurrying to the east, you light your lantern. May Usriel grant me courage in this place of pure evil. Step warily into the blackness. Approach it. Bah, 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 bah. After a few seconds, you arrive at a junction. Uh, so... I'm going to go ahead and turn east. Yeah, that boy got them. He got that ball top. The sound of scurrying continues ahead of you as well as the sound of heavy footsteps. Hmm. Orcs are not undead, so my powers are ineffective. I should be cautious if I meet some. A few yards ahead, at the limit of the light cast by your lantern, you catch sight of a cleft in the tunnel wall. Duck inside the cleft. Summon a holy blast. Fuck yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Focusing on your holy prayers, you summon a righteous cleansing light. As the two orcs stomp down the passageway, you shout a holy chant and let loose a powerful blast. There is a pained roar from the two orc uh, the two orcs, as the light washes over them, but they are not yet defeated. Uh, the healing hand of Usriel shall guide me! <laughs> the orcs shake off the holy attack and recover. They unsheath their weapons, while you arm yourself and prepare to fight. Gotta fight him. I'm gonna fuck you up! Fuck with the bull, uh, uh, get to the horns! Can I attack them? What's going on? Oh, shit. Eat shit. <laughs> ah, ah. Uh, attack. Oh, man, this boy is strong. A quick search of the orc's bodies turns up a handful of gold pieces, a crude bone charm, and a half-eaten rat on a stick. Yeah! Take that bone charm. You pocket the bone charm, trying not to retch as you get close to the orc's stinking corpse. Perhaps it will be useful later. Cautiously, you make your way further down the dark tunnel. So, I know what's in here. I This is pretty... I, I remember this somewhat... Uh, I don't remember if there's actually items in this room. The passageway soon comes to an end at a solid-looking door. Trying to open it, the door refuses, refuses to budge. You listen at the door, but hear nothing. Hmm. A good kick should be all it takes to get this door open. His face. Oh, shit. What did I do? Okay. okay. Uh, attempt to kick the door down. You give the door a mighty kick and it swings open easily. You are about to enter when you notice that the room is actually a pit. Had you charged the door, you'd be nursing a sore rump by now. Examining the pit, you notice that the sides are full of handholds, so it should not be difficult to climb back out. Or climb down into the pit. <laughs> Looking around, you can see two cave entrances leading off from the pit opposite you. Moldering bones litter the floor, small piles of them stuck together in pools of fetid slime. You think back to your education on dwarven architecture. Mm. Judging by the way this door led straight into a pit, the dwarves must have used this area for the disposal of refuse. I see that motherfucker right there. You enter a small cave with slime dripping from its rock, rough rock walls. A sickly sleet, 
a sickly a sickly sweet smell assaults your senses as you enter it is the smell of rotting meat the remains of rats and even a half-eaten goblin lie on the in one corner in another is a large joint of meat it looks like whatever is using this place as a larder is saving this choice haunch of giant ardwolf for later a uh, creature of evil i bless you in the name of usril may your journey to darkness be driven by the light give me that meat investigate the other cave the first thing that hits you as you approach the cave is the stench an unpleasant melange of mushrooms and rotting meat whatever was nearby you sense that it has not strayed far from its home the living dead smell better than this room. <clears throat> Survey it. As you peer deeper into the gloomy cave, you suddenly see a pair of evil-looking eyes appear from the darkness. A slime beast lurks within and has spotted you. Two hideous slime zombies, previous adventurers reanimated by the slime, have also emerged from the goo. They shamble towards you with one sole purpose. The slime beast, meanwhile, launches itself at you with its powerful hind legs. I'm gonna bust that ass! Don't fuck with me! Are you, you fucker? Clashing! Hit him! Did I get him? Kill him! Kill him! What the fuck is going on, okay? What? I'm gonna die, like, immediately. What the fuck? I, I swear to fucking God, dude. Rip corn. I gotta fucking restart this, but I fucking get killed in the first goddamn cave room. This this is rough. Oh my god, this is rough. What the. The creature's dead. You wipe the disgusting ichor that passes for their blood from your weapon and investigate. Apart from sticky pools of acidic slime and various mounds of other, altogether more unpleasant material, there is nothing of interest here. Fucking... Dude. I don't think I can fight at all. You arrive back at the junction of the passage, you look left to see the cave entrance in the dim distance. A little way along the passage, you come to what is clearly a sentry post with a sleeping goblin here. You approach with caution and can see an orc in leather armor asleep at his post. <laughs> I should really smite this lazy creature. Wake the orc and fight him. I can't coup de gras him? I 
I gotta, I gotta try and smash the shit out of him, right? Uh, there is an angry snort from the orc as he wakes. He grumpily gets up with a start, draws his weapon, and snarls at you, ready to fight. Could I not have just bashed him in the fucking head? I'm in trouble. Ooh, I'm in trouble. You defeated the orc guard. Yeah, all right. All right, I'll take it. The passageway begins to widen until you enter a cave. However, blocking the cave's exit are two of the ugliest creatures you have ever seen. They have the proportions of dogs, but their hide is rough and scaly. Each beast is chained to the cave walls, cured to their thick brass collars. The two orc hounds begin to snarl and strain at their chains. They cannot reach you, but their chains are long enough that should you approach, you will not be able to escape their slavering jaws. <laughs> These poor hounds have not been treated well by the looks of it. The Rus will not want me to see them in such pain. You are going to have to deal with them quickly, one way or another, before they attract the attention of an orc patrol, or maybe something even worse. Draw your weapon and see what has to be done. Fucking goddamn. Why do I have to fight them? Why do I have to fight? Can't I just smash them as they like, as they're like hanging off the chains? Drawing your weapon, you prepare to engage the orcs and orc hounds in combat. However, because they are chained to walls, their movement is limited. Thank you. Fuck you, bitch. Ah, get out of here, you asshole. Alright. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Two health. Fucking everything up. Oh, yeah. Leaving the cave as quickly as you can. You follow the new passageway as it turns north. This is what I needed. Set against the wall is a wooden bench where you may rest. Just needed a little sit down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rest and and consume some provisions. I need I need this. You sit down on the bench and take out a portion of provisions from your pack. Your moment of rest, combined with your healthy provisions, makes you feel so uh, much better. So, uh, and that was only ten. To your left, on the west face of the passage, there is a rough cut wooden door. You listen at the door and can hear a rasping sound, which may be some sort of creature snoring. Open the door. I must explore everything. The door opens to reveal a small smelly room. In the center of the room is a rickety wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Underneath the table is a small wooden box. You know what, I should probably actually change my status. Forgot about that. There we go. Uh, bald headed holy man. There we go. Judging by the remains of the dwarven architecture, this room has not changed much from its original purpose. Sleeping quarters for the night watch. Proving that your educated, educated guess is correct. 
I need like a, a a reverb thing to like make it echo when I say that. You see a green-skinned orc asleep on the straw mattress. I feel compelled to rid the world of these lazy creatures, but Usrael has other plans. Try and steal the box. Carefully, you begin to creep into the sleeping orc's room. Test your luck. Roll. You take the box and creep out of the room. With the box in hand, you leave the room and open the box in the passage. Inside, you find four gold pieces and a small mouse, which must have been the creature's pet. Yay, gold pieces! You release the mouse, which scurries off down the passageway. Bop, bop, bop. You arrive at another door. You listen at it, but hear nothing. Open that door! The door opens to reveal a small room with a stone floor and dirty walls. There is a stale smell in the air. In the center of the room is a makeshift wooden table on which is standing a lit candle. Under the table is a small box. In the far corner of the room is a straw mattress. Open the box! There are carved runes on the box. Due to your excellent education! You can roughly translate these into snake surprise. As you pick it up, something rattles within. Why did you open the box if it said snake surprise? <laughs> Why? You open the lid and small snakes pop out of the box, eager to bite your wrist. Oh, peanut brittle. Even though you are surprised, you manage to dodge them. Fight the snakes. Come on. Oh, shit. Don't bite me! Why did you attack the table, dumbasses? Oh shit. Snake surprise! Fuck off. Oh, you wanna do that game, huh? Yeah, I know your moves, dude. He's a sidewinder is what he is. Ow! Are you fucking serious? Oh, you're fucking pissing me off. The box has fallen to the ground during your fight with the snakes. There appears to be nothing else inside it. It must have been a practical joke made by one of the orcs. You decide to continue to head deeper, head deeper into the orc's barracks. If it says snake surprise on the fucking lid, don't open the box. <laughs> I, I mean, come on, you're educated. I am not going into the fucking orc room. Fuck y'all. Actually, hmm. Yep. It's, nah, it's probably a bad move, actually. Not going into the orc room. Further up the passage, on the west wall, you see another wooden door. You listen at the door and hear the worst singing you have ever heard in your life. Fuck them. Wait a minute. Okay, no, that does both go in the same way, I think. Keep heading north. So, for anyone who missed the last uh, session with the uh, Eliana or whatever, uh, that goes into a room with a couple of orcs singing at a table, and you just fight them. And then you move in through another doorway, and there is a orc commander. Actually, I could probably go in that one. I'll kill that guy here. Uh, so, you listen at the door, and you hear... Angry shouting coming from within. We're gonna kill both of them. You open the door to a large room. A large chair behind a solid looking table suggests that someone or something of rank uses this room. 
And it is a den of sodomy. Eating the shit out of him. In a corner of the room stands a strange orc. Strange looking orc with a warty face standing over a smaller orc. With the whip in his hand, he has been beating his servant who is whimpering beneath him. Clearly, this creature does not reflect my values of peace and love. Uh, yeah, beat the shit out of both of them. Evil! You are you, you are evil. I will kill you both, for you are a monster. And you? Why are you moving sideways, dude? Shit. Oh, shit. Why are you... Are they sidestepping? Oof, 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 oof. Okay, clash him, clash him, clash him, clash him, clash him, clash him, fuck him up, fuck Dude. Bust you up. Look at my bald head. I'm gonna bust you up. Oh my god! <clears throat> side step, side step, side step. Hammer smite. He's not doing too well. He's not doing too well, guys. The green blood of the dead orc smells foul as it seeps from their bodies. There is a chest nearby. You step around the corpses and decide to investigate. It is of sturdy construction, made of strong oak and iron, and it is firmly locked. Uh, smash that shit. The lock was obviously inadequate. It flies off and lands on the floor several meters away. You lift up the heavy lid and your eyes widen as you see the gold sheen coming from within. A fair number of gold pieces are inside. In one corner lies a small black bottle with a tight glass stopper containing a liquid of some kind. But as you are admiring this treasure, you hear a soft click and a wince in pain as a small dart fuck shoots through forward into your stomach. Fuck. You pull the dart out and decide to bandage the wound. This gives some relief, but you are still weak. You decide to take it easy and examine the contents of the chest. There's a stash of gold pieces and the label on the bottle shows it to be a potion of invisibility. Good for one dose. You take the potion of invisibility. What a find! This will definitely come in handy during your adventure. I'm gonna die! Oh. Wait, there's a bench in here? Yeah, I gotta rest and consume pr provisions again. What, how much provisions do I have? Three more. Okay. Fuck. Go back north. I'm not fighting those other orcs. Fuck those guys. The fucking bench in there. Keep going east. We're going east, guys. We're going east. Let's go east again. I don't know what's, uh, what's in here. Oh, wait. oh shit. I went the wrong way. Oh, fuck. The passage ends at a solid wooden door with metal hinges. Listening at the door, you hear strange mutterings and the clatter of what could be pots and pans. Whatever is there, there are several of them. Should I go through the door or turn back? What do y'all think? This is a decision that y'all should make for me. I know what's through that door. I'm pretty sure Billy knows what's through that door. But if, if anyone else wants me to go through the door, now say your piece. Bing, 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 bing. I don't. I'm not listening to you, Billy. <laughs> Fuck you, Billy. I don't know what that means, Fox. Does that mean go through the door, or does that mean leave? It's aggressive. 
Okay, so smash the smash it. All right. You open the door into a large room. From your education, you are positive that this used to be the dwarves' dining room. The orcs have destroyed most of the original stonework and repurposed it for their own needs. Sitting round. Oh, fuck. Sitting round a large table are five orcs busily drinking and dribbling their bowls of rat gizzard soup. All are involved in a rowdy argument as to who will get to chew the rat bones left in the large soup cauldron, so they do not see you enter. Oh, cool. I can't imagine this food was even blessed before they started eating. Uh, I'm getting the fuck out of here. That's five orcs. I don't have time for this bullshit. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a priest. I'm a priest. All right. I've got better things to do with my time. Turn northwards. I gotta get through this mountain, all right? This stuff, this, this is too much. The passageway leads into a square dungeon chamber. There are two doors in the eastern wall and two in the western wall. On the opposite side of the room, another passageway leads away north. The first door to the right is well used, and putting your ear to the keyhole, you listen and hear a man screaming for help from the inside. Before deciding what to do next, you listen to the other doors as well. From behind the second door to the right, you hear a thumping sound on the wood. Hello? Hello? Not funny! Open door! The first door to the left is made of solid metal. Listening at the door, you hear the sound of tortured screams coming from within. Putting your ear to the second door, to the left you hear nothing. And the power of Usriel compels me to help these unfortunate souls. Fuck. First door on the right. Let's go ahead and do that one. And I've played this game before, and so I know what to do. Uh, and this is where this game, this is the only downfall of this game, is that you know what to do if you've gone through this before. And at the very beginning, in this dungeon particularly, it, it's, one of those, it's one of those things where you will die... And you won't get as far as you did. So you won't remember the things later on in the game. But you will remember the things at the very beginning. And this is one of those things. You unbolt the door and swing it open. A nauseating stench hits your nostrils. Inside the room, the floor is covered with bones, rotting vegetation, and slime. A wild-haired old man, clothed in rags, rushes at you screaming. <laughs> His beard is long and gray, and he is a waving an old wooden chair leg. Is he simply insane as he appears, or has this been some kind of trap? And I know what I'm I know what to do. I made this mistake before. I'm trying to calm him down, alright? You shout, You are free, old man! at the top of your voice. Instantly his ranting cease. He stops dead in his tracks and sinks to the floor, weeping loudly. As he gradually composes himself, he thanks you many times. Many years ago, he was an adventurer, like you, in the search of the warlock's treasure. He was captured by the orcs and thrown into his solitary cell as a sort of pet for the creatures. I, I can't imagine this poor man knows much about much these days. Still, I will bless him and send him on his way without armor or weapons or food. Once you have given him Usril's blessing, thoughts and prayers, the man looks at you nervously before thanking you again and making a hasty exit. Lucky! Leave the filthy cell. I know what's in the second door on the right. I'm going to go to the second door on the left real quick. I don't think there's anything in here for me, though. The door is unlocked. Opening it, you find yourself at the threshold of the orc's weapons store. A torch hangs from one wall, lighting up a small armory room stocked with swords, shields, helmets, daggers, breastplates, and the like. Very nice. Very nice. A circular iron shield with a golden crescent lies at the far end of the room. However, as you do not use a shield, it is worthless to you. Fuck me. You poke around the room. 
The weapons are blunted and worthless, and the helmets are battered and rusty. You decide to inspect the breastplates on the shelves to see if there is anything worthwhile there. You examine the breastplates and sh the shelves thoroughly, but there appears to be nothing of value. Well, fuck. Okay, do you guys want me to open these doors? If so, let me know. Because these two are the, are the special ones. I should actually make it so that I can that, so that you can pay tokens to tell me where to go. That'd be pretty cool. Which one though? Which one, Fox? Which one do you think's a, a winner? I'm only gonna go through one. I'm not gonna go through the other. So which one do y'all want me to go through? Second? This one? You say two, but that's that's the second door. This is technically this is the second choice. This is the second door. You're gonna have to be a little bit more specific, Chief. All right. Well, then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip a coin. How about that, bitch? A coin. Gotta make things difficult. All right. I got my coin here. It's going to be heads. Heads that go through the first door, which is the second door on the right. Tails, I go through the first door on the left, which is the second choice. Heads first. Heads open. Second door. On, okay. Heads. Heads. I go through the first. The first choice. Okay. Oh, looks like it's tails. So second. Uh, first door on the left. But it looks like. <clears throat> The door is not locked and opens. The room in front of you seems to be a small torture chamber with various torture devices around the walls. In the center of the room, two small hunchback goblins are having their fiendish way with a dwarf who is tied to a hook in the ceiling by his wrists. The two hunchbacks are poking and cutting him viciously with their swords. The dwarf lets out a final scream and falls silent, eyes closed. His captors make disappointed noises and look around angrily at you as if it were your fault that the dwarf has collapsed. You must act quickly. Arr. Holy anger overtakes me! Two evil creatures give a loud shriek as they rush forward to attack you. Readying your weapon, you dive into battle. I will smite thee in vengeance of thy victim! Eat garbage! Oh my god, dude. Fuck him up, fuck him up, fuck him up, fuck him up, fuck him up! Oh, I hit him! Shit. Fucked him up. <laughs> Fuck off, bitch. All right. They're goblins. What can goblins do to me? You cut down the dwarf. With the last of his strength, he opens his eyes, looks at you, then looks downward. His eyes close again, and this time he breathes his last. You gently rest the dwar uh, dead dwarf on the floor. What will you do now? Eh, eh, search the goblins. Bravely, you search the bodies of the two dead goblins. As you go through their pockets, you find a large piece of sweet-smelling cheese. I'm taking that cheese. Ooh, I want some cheese right now. You decide to leave the torture chamber before you are discovered. Why can't I take search the dwarf now? Leave the chamber. I'm not searching that one. Y'all told me not to. Exiting the dungeon, you hear the sound of water ahead of you and make out a grilled portcullis at the end of the passageway. Before you can reach the portcullis, you will have to cross a bridge that passes over a gully of gurgling brackish water. 
You suspect it may actually be a sewer, judging by the smell rising from it. As you make your way towards the bridge, you pass some goblins, which appear uglier than all the creatures you have encountered so far. The instant one of the goblins catches sight of you, it gives a screech of surprise and runs at you with its short sword drawn. Kill! Kill! It shouts, drawing the attention of the two other goblins. They all attack. Now I gotta fuck some goblins up. You wanna fight me? You really want this shit? Oh shit! Fuck you, motherfucker! I'm stronger than you! Hell yeah! Uh. Shit. Oh, nice! Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. There you go. There you go. Let's go ahead and smash this last one. There we go. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. They're just goblins, guys. You arrive at the end of the passage. An iron portcullis blocks your way, and no amount of charging is going to budge it. Okay. I don't remember the, uh, I don't remember the answer to this one. I'm going to pull the right lever, though. On the wall to your right are two levers, and it seems likely that these levers have something to do with the raising of the portcullis. Fuck, I can't remember which ones they were. <laughs> it was. Ah, uh, which one should I pull, guys? Come on. Come on, tell me which one, please. Somebody give me the right answer here. Somebody give me the right answer, or I'm gonna flip a coin. Don't make me flip this coin. Left. Billy, I feel like you're trying to get me killed. Uh, left it is. Left it is. To your horror, thank you, Billy, you realize that this dummy lever was a trap. Although it looked like a handle, it was in fact a wax coated sword blade and it has now cut your hand badly. Thank you, Billy. I appreciate your help. Did, did you ever use. Wait, wait, what the fuck? Did you ever use your left hand or was it your right hand? What does that even mean? Unfortunately, luck is not on your side. This was not your sword. This was your sword hand, and your fighting prowess has been severely hampered. Fuck! What does that mean? What is? I don't even know what skill does. You hear a deep rumbling noise, and the ground begins to shudder. Slowly and noisily, the portcullis rises into the ceiling. Without hesitation, or with hesitation rather, you walk towards the junction, listening carefully. However, you hear nothing down either corridor. I know what's both ways. That's the problem here. I know the west way is probably better for me. Where do you guys? Where do you guys want me to go? Just pick, pick a direction. Any direction. Any direction. Billy, shut the fuck up. Anybody else? Pick a direction. Anybody? Anybody got any ideas? You know, why is saying a terrified young man runs into you? What the fuck? See, what do I have? I have a lantern, a backpack, bone charm, a giant ardwolf meat, a potion of invisibility, some cheese. My cert my quest is to search for an ancient tome of demonology. <clears throat> oh shit, that was in the dwarven halls? Did I fuck that up? I might have fucked this up. I might have fucked this up, guys. I, <laughs> I didn't realize it was in the dwarven halls! Fuck! All right, we're going right because I think that there's dwarven halls to the right. Junction east, east. Yeah, let's go this way. I th these might be dwarven halls. I have no fucking clue. Cautiously, you creep along the passageway. After a short time, you reach a fork in the path, with the path continuing northwards. Eastwards, you can see a broad stone bridge. 
Yay, I can rest. Rest and consume some provisions because I fucking need them. All right, I'm gonna go east. I do see the, that, but I think that's a mine. Pretty sure there were dwarven ruins over here. I can only imagine. Uh, you follow the path to the east. Soon enough, you arrive at a broad but cracked stone bridge, which leads over a yawning subterranean chasm. On the other side of the bridge, you can see an archway carved to resemble a huge dwarven head. Ooh, I think these might be the halls. With no other options, you start to cross the bridge. No sooner have you taken a few steps than the floor begins to crumble. You break into a run to avoid the crumbling floor. My skill is low! Ah, I fucking fall! Ah, you tumble into the darkness below. You feel like you are falling for some distance before you finally splash down into icy cold water. You quickly rise to the surface, coughing up lungfuls of the cold, rank-tasting water. The current carries you forward, and looking ahead, you can see that the water is being drawn down into a sucking whirlpool. The whirlpool pulls you under into the churning darkness. You struggle to hold your breath as the current buffets you, knocking you against the rocky walls of the river's course. Test your skill again! Oh shit! Uh, ah, no, no, don't get away, please! Oh no, I'm dead! You are spun around and smashed against unseen rocks. The pain is unbearable, and you struggle to breathe. Fuck! Oh my, my health! It really, it literally just wasted everything I just healed up. Just when you think you can't hold your breath any longer, you feel yourself rising. Your head breaks the surface again, and you gulp down great lungfuls of air. Once you have gathered your wits, you grimace in pain as you realize that you have hurt your shoulder somehow. Are you fucking kidding me? You are carried through another high-roofed cavern from the river's outflow. By the dim glow lighting the cavern around you, you make out a rocky ledge to your right. Swim, swim to the rocky ledge, I guess. Fuck. Grabbing hold of a jutting outcrop, you take a moment to recover your breath before pulling yourself up onto the ledge. The ledge narrows, and there is no way for you to continue along it. To your left, the river races away towards distant daylight. Just as you are considering your options, your ears are beset by a high-pitched shrieking and a flock of bats descends from the roof above to drive you from their cave home. <laughs> Fucking assholes. What does this do? You all move, Mr. Postman. You want to fight? I have just as much skill as a bunch of bats now. Ow! Fuck. Okay, alright, 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 alright. Fuck off. Fuck off, bats. Fuck with me. I'm a human being. You're bats. What are you going to do? When you have slain many of their number, the bats break off their attack and return to their roots in the roof of the cave. You have no choice but to dive back into the water and see where the current takes you. Well, shit. Dude. The current deposits you on a sandy bank. As you get to your feet, you look around and find yourself a large cave with damp walls. There is also a strange, unpleasant slime oozing out of the cracks in the walls. <sighs> I feel the tortured souls of the dead inhabiting this cave. You start to search the cave for a way out when suddenly 
Shapes emerge from the slimy walls. Three slime zombies, cadavers of unfortunate adventurers, now animated mindlessly by the slime they are encased in. As you draw your weapon to defend yourself, a horrifying slime worm appears from within the slime to join the ambush. Oh boy. I am literally getting wrecked over and over and over. <clears throat> it's okay though, I'm okay. I'm alright, guys. Go ahead and move this way. Slash. Ow. These guys are going to move in this way and then they're going to try and attack me. Backwards, that was cool. That was pretty fucking cool. The back tracker. Ah, what the fuck? You better not fuck this up. Oh my god, dude. Oh shit, I shouldn't be t attacking these guys with my fucked up hand. Ow! Oh, I might die here, guys. Oh fuck! Wait, I have a heal. That's right, I have a resurrection stone. Uh, yes, I would like to resurrect. Uh, so you get, I think you get three resurrection stones. I can't remember exactly. Check how many, let's see if I got my inventory here. Resurrection stones. Yeah, you get three of them. Three tries. So I am back where I was. My skill is still ass. That's the problem here. <laughs> Shut up, Billy. Uh, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep trying east because I know there are ruins east. I, I've seen them. But the thing is, like getting across this this river here. Test your skill. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. No. 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 Oh yeah. Okay. I made it across. Oh shit. All right. This is where we need to be. I don't need to look over the edge. Fuck off. Pretty sure this is the, the place. The carved dwarven head archway looms ahead and you marvel at its construction. The previous inhabitants of Firetop Mountain were obviously once proud of their home, as shown in this high level of artistry. The features look to have been chiseled into the rock face in a style that could only be of dwarven design. This place echoes with the ghosts of its previous owners. Enter the Dwarven Ruins. You enter the Dwarven Entrance Hall. It is everything you expected, lined with tall stone columns that stretch into the darkness, intricately carved in the image of Dwarven heroes of old. Beautiful. So majestic. No time to rest and admire the stonemasonry skills of the dwarves, though. About halfway down the hall, you notice a path that leads off to the left, behind one of the statues. Uh, westward path. Where does this go? 
Ooh, that looks creepy as fuck. You reach out, you reach the ruins of what looks like an ancient bridge spanning the crevasse, long since collapsed. You can just make out the other side of it on the far side. There is no way you will be able to make it to the other side, so you decide to head back into the dwarven halls. Well, shit. Guess I'll go northwards. As you walk through the hall, you notice movement out of the corner of your eye. Something appears to be watching you. Investigate. Quickly, you chase after it, running past the columns. As you reach the middle of the hall, you hear a scampering off to the left, followed by a high-pitched shriek. Investigate. You step behind one of the giant statues and find some old bones amongst some rocky debris, which look like they have come from a small creature long since dead. You suspect the sound was probably a rat as there is a small hole in the wall. You are about to turn around when you find a scrap of parchment. Ooh, neat. Very neat. On it is a drawn map of Darkwood Forest. While the interior of the forest is not shown, it does label the dwarven village of Stonebridge to the north and a tower to the south, belonging to someone called Yastromo. You doubt this will be useful on this particular adventure, but take it anyways for your future travels. La 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 You reach junction with three different passageways. Fuck. Take the western pass. Let's go west. Let's go west. Oh shit. What is this? Oh fuck. I don't think I've been this way. You enter a wide corridor. Decorated. No, I died once, Clay. I died once. I I uh, I fell off a bridge and I got almost drowned and then slimes killed me. So I get three chances of resurrection. So this is my second try. You enter a wide corridor decorated with large dwarven statue carvings. They are beautifully carved and look as though they could come to life at any moment. Nearby is a dead goblin. <laughs> it looks like it has been completely crushed against the wall, and quite recently at that. Another beast of chaos destroyed! Praise to Usrael! You begin to walk through the hallway when suddenly you hear a quiet click. One of the statues begin to move. Its head turns left and right, searching for any sign of life, but how on earth will you get past it? Oh shit. There appears to be a message carved in dwarven runes on the stone floor. What, uh, what do y'all think? I think, uh... I think I should attempt to avoid the statue's gaze. <laughs> it seems... It seems crazy enough to work! Uh, that's what I think. I mean, I am educated. Like a stone sentinel, the dwarven statue surveys the hallway, moving its head back and forth. You watch the movement of the head, prepare yourself, then try to safely time your movements to avoid the statue's line of vision. Fuck! I have to do skill. Fuck! Fuck! Oh wait, is it luck? It's a luck. Oh, cool. Having escaped from the dwarven trap, you press on ahead. Nice, nice luck. <laughs> my luck is still good. My skill sucks, but my luck's... Oh, shit, there's bats. The tunnel skirts around the edge of the subterranean chasm. I had best be cautious here. I don't want to fall down there into the darkness. All of a sudden, there is a leathery flapping and an awful shriek. You only have moments to prepare as a flock of bats swoop in to attack you. Fuck bats, dude. You know what? Fuck bats and fuck rats, dude. That's my fucking motto for this game. Fuck bats and fuck rats. Are you kidding me right now? You guys need to fucking take your turns, all right? Oh, double kill. 
Double kill. You take care of the last of the shrieking bats, then stumbles dangerously. Carefully, you put away your weapon and attempt to steady yourself on the ledge. You regain your balance and carefully continue down the passage. Dude, what are you fighting? You fucking crazy, man. Northwards, the passageway ends at a solid wooden door. You listen at the door, but can hear nothing. There appears to be no choice but to open the door. Open the door. You don't even give me a choice, man. You enter a large square room. You flash your lantern around the room and catch a, gl a quick glimpse of its emptiness. Although there are paintings on the wall, before your lantern suddenly goes out. You try to relight it, but it will not catch. Uh, what sorcery is this? I sense an evil presence in these choking dark tendrils. In the blackness, you hear a succession of frightful noises. Howls, screams, cries, and wails are getting louder and louder until they reach the pitch where you must cover your ears. Chant a holy prayer. The screaming in the dank room doles as you focus on the prayers of your holy god, Usrul. Murmuring a prayer, you repeat it as it gets louder and louder, drowning out the unhealthy, unearthly wails. Fuck your, fuck your unearthly wills. Your righteous prayers reach a crescendo, and a cleansing light clears away the darkness. Hell yeah. As long as I am with Usril, I shall not be alone. The room is now silent, and a pleasing light guides you. There are figures in the paintings on the walls, frozen in silent screams. On the wall opposite are two doors. Oh, fuck. They always make me choose. Y'all got any choices? Anybody? Bearded, you want to choose this time? Billy's been getting me fucked over royally recently. I gotta, I gotta, like, and Fox, Fox is just trolling the shit out of me, all right? Bearded, it's all up to you, man. Which door? Left or right, man? Left or right? Left or right? Left or right? Left or right? I'm gonna trust you. Trusting you with my, uh... Priest's life. Left? Fuck you, Billy. I'm going right. You push the heavy wooden door open. It creaks with a labored groan as it moves, revealing an incredible sight. Standing guard over the exit is a stern stone statue. It appears to be one of the dwarven kings who ruled Firetop Mountain before the Warlock's invasion. The statue is holding an ancient warhammer with dwarven runes carved into the head. Upon closer inspection, it seems to be loose. I have no interest in this statue. I must move on. Take the Warhammer. Inspecting the Warhammer more closely, you see that it is definitely loose. You give a mighty heave, but the weapon fails to break free from the stone grip of the Dwarven King. However, you suddenly feel blessed and you have a renewed sense of confidence. Some strange Dwarven power is at work here. All right. Whoa. You enter a derelict feast hall. Skeletons lie seated at benches, while some lie on the floor. Table, chairs, and skeletons are all covered in cobwebs. One of the skeletons is holding a silver chalice, as though proposing a toast. Wait a minute. On the table is a silver crucifix glinting in one of the shafts of life, of light, rather. Uh, I'm going to pick up the crucifix because, hell yeah, I'm holy man. You walk over to the bench and pick up the crucifix, putting it in your pack. Looking back at the tables, you notice the toasting skeleton jitter as it turns its head. Fuck me! Surprise! It jitters to life, and the other skeletons come to life as well. The chalice is thrown aside and skitters down a hole as the skeletons swarm towards you. I told you that would get someone eventually. The lead skeleton cackles at its practical joke. Now let's finish them off. You draw your weapon and prepare to fight. Fuck you, Billy. All right. Kiss, kiss my ass, right? <laughs> you fucking, your dick. Oh shit! What is that? That's not a skeleton, is it? You can only attack this guy. 
He's got more stamina. Oh, fuck. Owies. Ow. Wait, how did he miss me? Did you see that? That's a big skeleton right there. You see that guy? <laughs> what a dick. Those redstones. Nah, I'm, I'm good, man. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Ah. Uh. Kill that guy. Bitch, what are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do about it, punk? Oh shit. Ow, fuck. What's that, Billy? Rev up those redstones. Rev up the. I, I I think I killed them all. I don't think I need to res. The power of Usrel dispelled that evil enchantment. The last of the skeletons defeated. You see no more reason to be here. You decide to press on. Should I go downstairs or go to the north room? Stairs leading down sounds pretty fucking badass. I think that might be where I want to go. I'm gonna go downstairs. I've never been downstairs. Oh, cool. You follow the steps down. And pass through an archway with ancient dwarven runes worn away by time. These are the forges where the dwarves once smelted the metal ores they dug out of their mines beneath the mountain. However, they have been cold for decades. Then why are they light lit? You investigate the forges more closely and they suddenly rumble, belching flame and smoke. Okay, well... Oh my god. What is that? A flaming stony hand appears and a wave of heat hits your face. Emerging from the forge is an ancient fire golem. Fuck. Bound by the dwarves to keep their forges lit. Dwarven runes burn brightly across its flaming stone body, invoking its ancient magic to keep it working tirelessly. Motherfucker left the stove on. <laughs> However, it has been broken free from the forge and has set its sights on you. It hurls a fireball, of f a ball of fire, and you drive out and you dive out of the way as it barely misses you. Okay, I sense nothing living here. These must be golem constructs. Your focus on the fire golem has caused you to miss something. Another fire golem has emerged from the other furnace. You must now battle them both. Oh, all right, shit. Mm, might be in trouble here. Might have to res. Oh, fuck me, dude. I might be in some trouble. Oh my god, dude. I couldn't even fight him. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. Dude, there's no way I can fight this guy.
Dude, what the hell? <laughs> Shit. Fuck you, Billy. Fuck him. Didn't have faith. Didn't have no faith. The terrifying fire golems give an unearthly groan as the last of their flames die out. In the remains of one of the creature's ashes, you see a brightly burning red gem. Will you take it? Hell yeah, I will. <sighs> you grab the red gem and shout in pain as it sears your flesh. You instantly drop it. It's burning hot. No shit, it's burning hot. Pick it up with a fucking dish, a fucking potholder or something, dude. It just came out of a fire golem. Are you educated or are you not? Carefully, you take a piece of fabric <laughs> and wrap the fire gem inside it. You gingerly pick it up and put it in your pack. With nothing else left to do, you decide to leave. I swear. I swear, these boys. Leave the room to the north. Is there a bench anywhere nearby? I need to rest. You're stopped by another intersection to the north. Up some steps, you can vaguely hear voices as well as the sound of rushing water in the distance. Ooh. The passage also continues eastward. Uh, I don't know about this one. I, I think north would probably be cool. But I'm probably going to have to fight something up there. I've ne I have not explored any of this, so I don't know about any of this. I feel like East is going to go to an area where I've been before. So I'm probably going to go North. We're going North, guys. You reach the top of the stairs and you notice that the floor is covered in sand. Oh, fuck. The walls are rocky and uneven and cold, feel cold and damp to the touch. The air has also become cool and fresh. You reach an intersection. To the North, you can hear the sound of fast running water. And to the east, you can hear the sound of voices. I'm gonna go east because I want to hear... I want to see what the voices are. I don't think I've ever seen people in this area. Oh, shit. What are those? Passageway widens, and you can see ahead a large cavern. As you shine your lantern around it, you can see the crude stone weapons on the floor and a small fire in the center of the cave, but you see no way through. As you turn to make your way back, you stop in your tracks to see new two Neanderthal cavemen. Barring your exit, they grunt aggressively at you. These uncultured creatures are sadly a devolution of human purity. Offer them the fire gem. Yeah. Quickly, you pull out the fire gem from your pack and unwrap it. The cavemen are mesmerized by the glow of the fire. They grunt in curiosity, gesturing towards it. You cautiously walk towards them and hand them the fire gem. <laughs> Neanderthal negotiator, find a way out of the caveman's cave without a fight. Hell yeah. They eagerly take it from you, thrilled with their new gift. The cavemen run off to their home with their prize, leaving you to exit the cave. I ain't got time for caveman hijinks. Let's go north. Ah, uh, rest bench. Yes, I will rest and consume. Whew. This has been an adventure. You get up from the bench and prepare to continue your journey. The sound of, river, of the river is pleasant and soothing. Usrael will help me safely cross this water. Oh. My. God. As you stand on the pebbled bank, you hear a fluttering of wings and look up to see three giant bats swooping down on you to attack. These aren't even small. This isn't swarms. These are small bats, all right? Did I just waste that shit? Come on now. Ow! Fuck, dude. Fuck you, man! Oh, 
What the fuck? You better hit this motherfucker, I swear. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, 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 okay. Get him, 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 get him. Oh my fucking god, man. How are you sl slicing and dicing, dude? You're killing me, dude. I can't believe I'm struggling in a, I'm in a, like a grappling struggle with a fucking bat, dude. It's like I didn't even rest, man. You walk up to the water. Is it safe to swim? Although you cannot see any immediate signs of danger either in the water or around its banks, there is no other way to cross the north side of the river. You suddenly notice a gleaming sword lying in the river bed several steps in. It seems like a fine weapon, but unfortunately, as you do not wield a sword, you have no use for it. With nothing else of interest here, it now seems that the only way onwards is to swim downstream to the east. Oh boy. Current is strong and takes you swiftly downstream. It's cold, but I will remain focused. You are washed along through a narrow opening and out into a large cavern with banks on both sides. Climb onto the south bank. You find yourself on the south bank of the underground river. It looks like you need to get to the north bank and there appears to be four ways of crossing. Okay. To your left, a rusted bell appears. The sign, ferry service, two gold pieces, please ring. There is a small raft in front of you on the bank with a long stick resting beside it. You could put across the river. A rickety old bridge crosses on the right. If you don't trust any of these, you may swim. Lots of options here. I must choose wisely. I'm educated. Ring the bell. I have the gold. I would rather a professional guide me across the river than to test my skill, which sucks ass right now. The bell gives you a dull clang, and after a few moments out of the darkness, you see a withered old man rowing a small boat. He rows slowly across to you, moors the boat, and limps towards you. <laughs> you guys see this? <laughs> well, I, I don't want to be an asshole. Like I like I rang the bell. The ferryman's coming. I don't want to be an asshole. So I'm gonna speak to the ferryman. Ferryman asks you for three gold pieces. When you protest at the price, he mumbles some flimsy excuse about inflation. Okay. He begins to get angry at your pro protestations. I have 41 gold. I can give him the gold. I'm not gonna threaten him. Look at my health. If he fought me right now, he he could blow me over with his breath. The cal uh, he calms down, takes the gold, and rows you across to the north bank. Yeah, it's fine. After mooring the boat, he ambles off down the passageway. Get off the boat. You are now standing on the bank, uh, north bank, in the large underground cavern. The most striking thing is a massive structure to the north built into the cave wall itself. It emanates a feeling of dread as it looms over the riverbank. To the right of the huge structure is a smaller but still imposing building in the cave wall. Directly to the east is a wooden building near the bridge. Half-finished wooden boats lie nearby as though in progress. To the west is a small wooden shack, probably large enough to house the living quarters for a single person. I've been in all of these. Uh, I think... I can't remember. I think this is where the uh, the lady is. If I fuck this up, though, like I I can't like she's it's a shop, right? That looks like the land of the dead. I'm pretty sure it's this this area over here. I don't think it's that small area, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into the right one. Uh, walk to the shack to the north, or the shack to the west, to the northeast. 
northeast, smaller structure. I think this is a... Uh, follow the faint sandy path leading to an imposing building in the cave wall. While not as large as the building of the north, it is nonetheless magnificently grand. It towers above you, and you cannot help but wonder how it's on how on Titan thing was built. At the very at the top of the steps is a heavy stone door that seems very solid. Try to open the door. Did I go in the right area? Uh, heaving open the door, it grinds against the floor in protest. Entering, you find yourself in an opulently decorated room. You are overwhelmed by the sight of thousands upon thousands of bottles lining the shelves of the room. Finely carved furniture is placed strategically about the chamber. Ah, yes, this is where I was trying to get to. This crazy lady here. Waiting for you inside is a tall woman wearing a long dark gown and a spiked crown. Welcome, Landa Landov Lowen. I am Oriana, the Keeper of Souls. Sorry, I'm not uh, doing the voice for her, sorry. Uh, you don't know me, or maybe you do. I can never remember, but rest assured your player does. Do not be alarmed, I'm here to help you. Uh, my player knows her. She must be referring to Usril. Um, why would I, just, I, out of the blue, ask about the Domain of the Dead? No. Purchase something from the Soul Keeper. Sell something to the Soul Keeper. Acquire about the Warlock's treasure. Sell something to the Soul Keeper. Let's see what I can sell. I don't need a map of Darkwood Forest. Just don't. I, I probably will need a, a potion of invisibility. And a Silver Cruise fix can't hurt. Purchase. So I definitely need provisions. Port, potion of Fortune. Uh, what is Potion of Skill? So I, I'm going to get... How much do I have? 43 gold, huh? So, one? Oh, I can only buy one? Uh, potion of skill. Yeah, let's do a potion of skill. Let's see if I can purchase. Okay, yeah. So, I have like no gold now or something? Eight gold. That's fine. Don't need anything else. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Ask about the domain of the dead. Well, why not? What can you tell me about the domain of the dead? You ask the soul keeper. She pauses for a moment, but her face remains expressionless and without emotion. A place cursed by Zagor. Created to provide an army of restless souls, each of which will endlessly guard his inner sanctum. I find it to be a useful location to be near, considering my line of work. However, I am not without my protection. Many so-called heroes have become nothing more than tortured spirits to guard the warlock's treasure. I would advise you be prepared. All right. About the Warlock's treasure. Uh, Zagor is rumored to have a hoard of treasure. Do you know anything about it? You ask Oriana. She raises an eyebrow quizzically, then answers. Ah, uh, yes, of course. The Warlock uh, guards his treasure well. It is kept under lock and key within a magical treasure chest. He never keeps the three keys with him, instead choosing to cast a spell on them. Each key is secretly guarded, and changes position within the mountain each time someone enters. The more keys used to open the chest, the greater the reward within. Alright. Yeah, alright. Um, I can't buy anything from you or sell. I don't want to sell it. Bye! You bid the Soul Keeper goodbye. Her presence makes you somewhat uneasy, and you are eager to leave. Goodbye, Land. Oh, goodbye, Land of Loan. She says, "I know we shall meet again, if not during this adventure, then during your next one." Not understanding what she means, you leave for the large structure set in the cave walls. Bye bye, bye. Um. I've already been, I've been to all of these. Basically, uh, in the west, in the shack, there's a dude sleeping, and if you piss him off, he, like, he's got a, a flame, like a hellhound, uh, that'll fuck you up. And the, right in the shack, there's a bunch of skeletons building a boat for some reason. I've never figured out why. If you go in there, they attack you as well. So, I'm at five health. Not gonna worry about that. Just go ahead and go north. 
I want to go up there, though. West Tower. Fuck yeah, West Tower. You decide to walk westwards and reach the tower. The sandy path continues until you reach some stone steps that lead upwards. Just as you're about to climb the steps, you suddenly feel angry about being here within Firetop Mountain, chasing some vague quest. Uh, the compendium still tissue isn't worth the paper it's scribed upon. Why I should have bothered seeking it is out is a question I'll have for the king when I return. <clears throat> Something strange seems to be happening to you, and it seems to be getting worse. Your anger and frustration increases. This place is affecting you somehow. Midas one luck. Climb the steps. The light glows from the tower entrance. Walk towards the light. You walk through the opening, and before you know it, you've stumbled upon a set of spiral stairs. Yeah, well... Uh, the stairs are cracked and old and do not seem to be held up by any supporting structure. Your thoughts are starting to become darker and more sinister. I pray day in, day out. Usril never replies. Why should I bother with his light when the darkness is so sweet? Oh man, dude, come on now. Climb up the stairs. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Remember that cra this crazy guy? You climb up the stairs, which seem to go on forever. Step by step, you climb up further. Uh, climb further up the dank tower until you reach an alcove where you catch, uh, can catch your breath. Suddenly, a raspy voice makes you jump in shock. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, hello there, kind stranger. Do you have a moment to spare for a hungry beggar? Any kind of food will do. The gaunt, tired man with sunken eyes and scraggly hair staring at you expectingly. Oh, pathetic creature. Creature should die. What am I thinking? Must control my thoughts. Test your luck. You better be fucking good on this one. You better not go some crazy fucking shit. Okay. Feed the beggar. You look through your backpack as you search for something to give the beggar. What will you give him? Provisions? Cheese? Hardwolf meat? I think I'll give him a piece of cheese. Feed on the beggar. Uh, I'm not a werewolf, man. I'm a man of God. A piece of cheese. I think a piece of cheese is good. The hardwolf meat would be nice. I think I've given that to him before, though. I'm curious what the cheese gives. Piece of cheese. You hand the beggar the wheel of cheese. He gratefully accepts and eagerly wolfs it all down. It's clear that the poor man is starving. Ah, oh, fuck, I could have used the cheese on the rats, dude. Ah, oh, cheese, my... F oh, wait, no, wait, that's not him. Ah, cheese, my favorite, he says. I am sorry that I cannot give you anything in return, but you have my thanks. You say goodbye to the beggar. Be careful, he warns. There are much more dangerous things in the domain of the dead other than myself. Not feeding him dirt, dude. <laughs> the fuck? You leave the beggar and head towards the stairs and continue upwards. All right, well, let's go upstairs. That looks dangerous. You continue up the staircase, which seems to have no end. The stone crumbling masonry causes you to slip many times, nearly causing you to tumble all the way down the tower. Thankfully, you are able to right yourself. You know what I should probably do? I should probably use this potion of skill. I'm just going to go ahead and use it. There we go. You stop and rest at a crumbling alcove. A daunting stone statue of an imposing warrior looms over you. They stand stern but proud, sword planted into the ground. It feels as though the statue is on guard, warding off the domain of the dead's evil spirits. I'm still struggling to control my thoughts. A rage is taking me over. Arr. Test your luck, alright? Woo! Get below it, get below it, get below it! No, 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 no! What? What? What is this? It was gonna be a three. Oh wait, did I have to get below f six? Yeah, this was. Oh wait, six or yeah, it was gonna be six. Oh man, I'm kicking the statue. Fuck. 
You give the, st the statue a vicious kick, now you have a sore foot. You hop around in agony from the pain of kicking the statue. Despite the pain, the feel- Oh, despite the pain, the that feeling of rage and anger seems to have subsided. I feel like my old self again. I was thinking, dude, I was thinking there was gonna be a lot worse than that. If it had fall- if I had fallen down the stairs and, like, broke my fucking back, or if, if it, like, killed me, or- You know, there's, like, tons of ways it could have been worse. But, you follow the steps further up the tower. Soon you notice an eerie blue glow emanating from further up the stairs. As you get closer, the light becomes more intense. You reach the source of the light. Set in stone is eerie, spidery writing. Each letter gives off an intense blue glow, and the words seem to slightly shift as you look at them, giving you a slight headache. <laughs> yeah, let me hit it with my fucking mace. That'll help. Can I continue on? You think I should con- I, I think I should continue on. I, I'm gonna fucking ignore this shit. This looks dangerous. May I, I'm gonna read it. You try to focus on the arcane words, clear your throat, and read them out. Mid dinim, lud ti. Lud mid rogas. Suddenly, you reel back in pain. Your mouth tastes like copper, and your head feels as though it's full of cotton wool. You try to in vain to focus, but it is of no use. The words you must have read must have been some kind of curse. Minus one skill. Fuck me, dude. We're feeling hazy and dim-witted. Nonetheless, you press on. It's better than five out of seven. All right. Dude, I, I don't know, man. He's educated. He's not smart. <laughs> you continue to climb further up the stairs. You pass a crack in the wall, oozing an unpleasant smelling slime. The goo is slowly forming a pool on the floor. Suddenly, there is a rumbling sound. Fuck me! God damn it! There is an explosion of brick and masonry as hideous... There's an explosion of brick and mace. <laughs> Dude, I just imagine these worms. These worms fucking bust out of the wall and I just start hawking down this fucking like dried sausage and prince tail bread. Uh, there is an explosion <laughs> of brick and masonry as hideous slime words burst out of the wall. You count three of them as they writhe towards you. These horrific beasts, long dead, have been reanimated by the slime itself. The creature snakes towards you with frightening speed. Get back. Get back. All right, they move backwards, don't they? Fuck. Oh my god, the clashes are real. Please don't kill me, please don't- Oh no! I'm in some trouble, guys. Guys, I'm in trouble, please. Please help me, please, guys. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, I'm dead. I'm, I'm, the, I mean, the, it's not gonna help. Nothing is gonna help me. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna die from poison. Yeah, 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 yeah. Revive me, asshole. Revive me, yes. That's uh, stamina. Stamina is my health. Dude, come on, man. Fucking bats again! <laughs> Fuck! Fuck! Why would you risk me into a fight?
Clashing with a giant bat. This is what I want. Ah! Oh no! Ah! Whoa! Hey! Dude, what are you f You're kidding me, dude. I think I have less stamina than the last time I fought. Oh my god, dude! Let me heal. I can I, it's a, right there. I can sit down, please. For the love of God. All right, I'm gonna steal this boatman's shit. All right, let's climb out. I can't. I can't do it. it won't let me. Let's get the ring the bell. Yeah, speak to the friend. Drink a potion of invisibility and steal the boat. <laughs> A quickly down the potion of invisibility and the fair the ferryman's eyes nearly pop out of his head He vanished before his eyes and all he can do is gape in surprise Fuck you ferryman Seizing the opportunity you run past the ferryman and push him over he lands face first into the sanity bank You dry dive into the boat grab the oars and begin to row the old man is furious. Hey you come back here with my boat or I'll, You'll regret it You ignore his idle threats as you are far by <laughs> beyond his reach. I'm a man of God I am commandeering this vessel to cross this river, and you can't stop me. You can't be sure, but the old man seems to be growing in size and stature. You must, but it must just be your eyes playing tricks on you. As you reach the north end of the bank, you feel a strange tingling as the potion of invisibility wears off. Having reached the other side of the bank, you have no need for the boat now. You are now standing on the north bank in a large underground cavern. The most striking thing is a massive structure to the north, built into the cave wall itself. It emanates a feeling of dread as it looms over the riverbank. Blah, blah, blah. We've already seen all of this. Let's go into the big thing in the northwest. Northeast here. Let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's get some, some provisions. I'm going to just explore. I feel like this guy's going to die. So I'm going to go ahead and just explore a little bit. I want to see what's in that shack with the fucking ferryman's shack. Okay, so there's a lady. Crazy lady. Hello. I'm going to sell you something. Here you go. There you go. Talk about something else. Purchase. I'm gonna purchase some provisions. Alright, and I'm gonna push purchase a potion of skill. There you go. Okay. Hey, how tell me about this. Ah, uh, okay. Tell me about that. Alright. Alright, bye bye. Oi lady! This shoe is too small for your foot. <laughs> Oi even. Alright, explore the shack to the west. Uh, you walk across a sandy riverbank leading to the nearby shack. There is a door leading into the shack, which seems to be unlocked. Go through the door. So, before, if you went into this shack, that ferryman was sleeping in the shack. There was a dog next to him, and the dog is really fucking pissed. But if I fought both of them, bad things happen. So, you are in a small, foul-smelling room. You notice two doors, one to the west, and one behind you to the south. What? The furniture in this room is sparse and has been been made mostly from bits of old oars or boats. Uh, there appears to be nothing of value in the room. An old man in ragged clothes. Oh my god. I thought he was the old guy. So there's an old guy sleeping, sleeping loudly. I thought that was the ferryman. Okay, well. And this fucking asshole dog. Next to him is a vicious looking brown dog with red eyes and black teeth, which you have awoken and is now eyeing you suspiciously. A deep growl is coming from its throat. Uh, leap across the room, drawing up and cut down the dog. Hmm. What do y'all think? Should I should I bang on the door and wake the old man up? Or leap across leap across the room and draw my weapon and cut down the dog? I don't have the stamina to really fight right now. 
I feel like I feel like banging and waking him up. Cut that bitch down. All right. I mean, the three stamina. But the thing is, like, he's gonna die. I'm gonna die. I, I don't even think I can make it up that tower, by like without he without healing. Right? There's not really much I can do right now. And I could use some skill. We'll try and leap across and cut him down. I don't think it's going to happen. The dog springs as you move. Its hideous black teeth are coming straight for your throat. Two meters from you, a blast of fire shoots from its mouth right at your face. Thank God I used that skill potion. Ah! Attempting to dive out of the way, your reflexes are unfortunately too slow. A blast of flame sears your skin and you roar in pain as you feel your flesh sizzle. Everyone in this chat is trying to get me fucking killed. I swear to God. <laughs> All right. Um, would you like to resurrect? Okay, I guess so. I have one left. You sit down on the bench. Blah, blah, blah. More bats. Oh, my God. Okay. Bats. Uh, bats. 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 Fuck the rats. And fuck the bats. All right. You better fucking bust these guys up, dude. I am not kidding with this shit. Are are you are you mocking me right now? Aha, bitches. Now we do the hammer smite. Oh, yeah. Ow. Oh, he fucking found me. He figured me out. Oh, damn it. I did the wrong thing. Damn it. Ah! actually interesting did I just get hit look like I got hit you better hit this motherfucker there you go smash him in the face please oh no ah Struggle that You kidding dude man there you go, all right uh, We have about as much as we did before Yeah, 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 yeah swim the water dive the water Let's get back to it. All right. Ba 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 da 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 climb out blah 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 ring the bell blah 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 Speak to the ferryman, blah blah blah. Pay him the gold pieces. I don't have time for your shit, ferryman.
northeast. Got to make sure I get those provisions. And we're going to go up the tower again. Uh, try and open the door. Right, continue. Sell the poopa. Bye. Uh, inquire. So the cool thing about this, though, is that what she said about the keys. So every time you play this, every run through, she hides three keys in random locations. So you have to look through all of these locations. That's the thing. The more keys you get, the better you're going to be off. If you find the treasure, you know. Uh, I found a few of those keys, but I've never gotten to the warlock himself. I usually die in the maze. There's a maze of death. That they, I think that's what they call it. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the dog. We're going to head to the structure to the north. We're going to go up the tower again. Because this area up front here, uh, that can kiss my ass. There's Right here, you go up these steps and, and ghosts attack you. And there's a lot of them and they're annoying. Blah, blah, blah. I am mad. Minus one luck. Climb the steps. I am angry. This tower, it makes me angry. Continue. Yep. Minus one luck. Climb the stairs. What did I fight that got me killed? Nice. Feed the beggar. Piece of cheese. There you go. Climb the stairs. No, 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 no. Before that, what got me killed up here somewhere? The worms. Fuck. The worms. Nice. I, I, I won this time. Despite wanting to destroy the statue, you maintain composure and kneel down in front of it. You close your eyes and feel a pleasant, calming feeling wash over you. Your whole body feels completely invigorated and you feel completely refreshed. Luck is restored! Stamina is restored! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, that was... That was so good. Dude. I didn't even get to take my potion. The statue must be magical with renewed vigor and no sign of anger you previously felt. You prepare to climb, continue up the tower. Yeah, it only took me two fucking deaths, huh? Ignoring this stupid bullshit. Let's kill some worms, huh? Now we're good, now we're good. I don't want to be fighting that thing. Oh, shit! Oh, they're not that strong. That poison, though, is going to fuck me up, dude. What the fuck? How did he hit me? Oh, it was the poison. Shit, dude. What the fuck, man? He's going to... I'm going to die. I'm going to die.
Thus ends the story of whoever the fuck this guy's name is. Lowen Luagen Nimagen. Lugen Lugen Frugen Dugen.